Oh boy, it's another one of these. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and we're taking a look at another game this time. Another game which I was able to get a, a decent supply of. This is the game Galactic Empires. It is a trading card game made originally in 1994 by the company Companion Games out of Stamford, New York. That's actually a Stamford is spelled with an M, like muscle. So, um, anyway, Galactic Empires, like I said, is a game made in 1994 that officially makes it part of what I call the Wild West era of trading card games. That is the period between the release of Magic the Gathering and the release of Pokemon. Magic the Gathering was the first big game. There was a ton of experimentation around that, but it was a lot of like, a lot of like really nerdy games, you know, if, if it wasn't, you know, you had Magic the Gathering, so it, a lot of really nerdy stuff. So if it wasn't set in high fantasy, it was set in sci fantasy. So that's what a lot of these games were until, of course, Pokemon came along. Pokemon, um, when it came out in 1999-2000, brought with it such a huge shift that it did usher in a new era of trading card games, particularly with how it developed a new audience in the form of children. So these are Wild West era games. This was before a lot of the things that we take for granted in a lot of trading card games were properly codified, so you're gonna see a lot of stuff in here that uh, I'm sure your sociology teacher might have used this term a few times. Understandable, but not acceptable. There are going to be a lot of weird things in this game, a lot of things that are pretty, pretty messy. Um, and uh, like I said, just because these people make these mistakes doesn't mean it's okay for you to make these mistakes. It is going to be another game that is a learning experience, although this game, as you're going to see, was a bit of a mess, but um, it actually lasted a while. I actually have over to the side here for, for later a booster box of, uh, of set four, Powers of the Mind, which we might take a look at later. Um, but you've watched my, my uh, if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know the answer to this question. So how long do you think this game lasted? Guess, guess, just, just hazard a guess, throw it out there. Did you guess? two years because if you did pat yourself on the back you've been paying attention this was another game that lasted two years two years seems to be the average span of which one of these games will last and galactic empires was no exception although a lot of this as you will see has to do with uh, a lot of its problems now this is galactic empires primary edition basic deck a and deck b so we have two separate starter decks um, I ordered the starter decks. I was actually sent an entire box, so I have like 12 of these. I have a number of games where um, I order a starter deck and get sent an entire case of them. Maybe I should do like uh, like some kind of like eBay bundle or something that just contains a bunch of random card games. I'm thinking I'm thinking some people would be into that. Let's uh, let's get into it. So anyway, here we have the uh, we have uh, what looks like a couple of starships in direct competition with each other. Um, the layout feels pretty scarce on here, to be honest. Uh, this one's actually this one's actually a lot better because you got like the ship and it's shooting at the other one, but it's shooting like right at the right at the player. We got the space combat. It's a bit off center though. I would have uh, maybe zoomed in just just you know have have this big long green ship like kissing the edges of the box. You know, really really get us up close and personal with the artwork. This one is. Uh, Maybe they were going for like the like the 2001 Space Odyssey look, which is you know like minimalist and boring, and of course straight up vertical. This is uh, B definitely has the better box. Let's have a look on the back. Wow, that's a lot of text. <laughs> the Galactic Empires is a science fiction trading card game. Okay, so this is explaining. This is maybe explaining too much for a back for a, for a box back. It does have a lot of text. It says everything about the game. However. I'm sure you felt it too. When I flipped over this box, my eyes just glazed over. I'm sure you did too. This is this is a case where it's you know a TLDR kind of thing. This is uh, and there are also also no pictures on the back. You know maybe have some pictures of the cards or like like a like a demo setup or like some more exciting artwork. This is this is way too large a block of text to be introducing your card game, especially on the back of a tiny little box like this. This is a uh, as you saw compared to the cards I, I slapped down earlier. This is uh, this is comparatively a small box this was uh, another thing of the uh, the uh, the Wild West era most boxes most deck boxes most uh, starter decks and cards were sold in card box size packs so according to this there are 55 cards in here um, I've actually done a little research on this what it is is it is um, these are actually structure decks we get uh, 
a 48 card pre-constructed deck, six random cards, so like half a booster pack of cards, and one reminder card, which tells us how some resources work. So it's actually 54 cards. It's only 55 if you include the reminder card. So maybe, maybe a little bit dishonest on there, but uh, let's take a look inside. Which one should we do? Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Uh, catch a tiger by his toe. If he hollers, make him pay. $50 every day. Eeny, meeny, my. Okay, we'll do B. Um. <laughs> Well, it's the one with the nicer artwork anyway, so I guess that uh, I guess that works in our favor. Nice and nice and plastic wrapped, despite being uh, cards that are uh, well over 25 years old at this point, aren't they? <laughs> uh, oh. Plastic wrap is held up remarkably well. The uh, the box was wrapped too, so I know this was uh, pretty well straight up. Companion games. I don't know if they're still around. I, I think I don't think they're 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 still. They're still around anymore. So here we have our box. It's very, very <laughs> tightly packed. Oh, look at that old, that old cardboard. Mm -hmm, this is the good stuff. And our cards have come out as uh, nearly a single wood block. <laughs> a lot of them are, are stitched together. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this to work. Yeah, you hear that? That was me loosening a bunch of the cards. I've heard of cracking packs, but this is ridiculous. Oh, we got some, we got some, uh, some more, some more cards in in here. Still, let's see, are these, uh, these might be our, our six cards from the back. Yeah, these are our six in the back, and they're all stuck together, too. Yeah! <laughs> yep, okay, so... So these are our six cards in the back. Yeah, there's our, uh... There's our, uh, there's our reminder card. That's one of them, and here is our deck. So we have the, uh, Mishad Heavy Cruiser. So, um, these are the starships, and, uh, you'll notice the text is a bit hard to read. This is, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll get worse as we go on, believe me. Um, this was before things such as, you know, before things like, like solid text boxes and things like that were, uh, were standard procedure. They were standard in Magic, but they weren't necessarily standard in all of these, and instead a lot of the, uh, people who were following the leader instead copied the, uh, copied the fact that uh, that magic had very intricate wraparounds on its card borders and opted to copy that instead so there is not like like this this would have worked this is the kind of boxing they maybe should have been doing or at least like like a slightly a slightly like like whitened area to make it so that the the text is easy to read you want the text to be easy to read the Mishad Heavy Cruiser was a slightly smaller version of the Command Cruiser. Lacking a distortion cannon, the Heavy Cruiser proved weaker in most combat situations. So this written on here is supposed to be flavor text. Um, flavor text is not really something that you want to risk getting confused with card text. Like I thought this was card text at first because of how straight up it was. Um, you either, uh, if, if you want, you want to make sure that your card text is clearly delineated between stuff that exists for gameplay and stuff that exists for lore. Like, for example, Magic the Gathering, um, they, they didn't always use this separation, this dividing line here, but they've always used it with quotation marks and italic text, or you could opt for a separate box, like with Pokemon and how they have the Pokedex data in a separate portion of the card. In this case, also italicized. I don't know, that's, that's, a, that's a straight up regular text, but you have to make sure that it's clear. In this case, I don't know if it's entirely clear. I think on some other cards, they actually are kinda, kinda mixed together. Um, so, well, this gets us started off with a space cruiser. So, these are the spaceships. You're allowed to have as many spaceships in play as the game starts with players. So in a typical 1v1 game, that means you get two ships in play. They must be from the same empire. So at the start of the game, you declare which empire you're fighting for, and you can you, you can only fight if you have ships of the same empire in play. There are also nomad and mercenary factions. I think we saw one in our little six pack over here. Yeah, Vectri and mercenaries like cruiser. So I would be allowed to play these both together. Um, yeah, the rest of these are all are all empire parts. But what they have up here is a maintenance cost. You have to use resource cards that produce this amount every turn in order to maintain it. And this over here is the shield section, although the Mashad use uh, something a bit different from the, the shield system. They, they have something called a node. Normally what happens is you have hit points. You have your power, which is over here. So this is ship type card with five power, and that's your health, basically. If, if you take five damage, you're gone, but you also get shields. Let's get that, uh, I think that card had, yeah. You also get shields. 
So what happens is these are basically, you know, hit points that cover as that, 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 that are on top of your normal ones and you get one shield back at the start of each turn. So they destroy your shields first before they start doing hull damage. Um, you have to pay this maintenance cost or else the ship cannot act for the turn. Um, it has weapons down here. The ones with the little plus signs, it can use any time. The ones with the squares also have to receive special supply. So that was what all these icons were. These are all supply points used to keep your ship active. Um, so it's a maintenance cost game rather than a uh, rather than a mana cost game. So it's it's a, it's it's a bit different. I'm not sure how much uh, these these resource items are used to pay for other cards, but this is how you uh, this is how you fight with a card. And you can have two in play. Once they're destroyed, they can attack your main base, which has 25 life points. So it's 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 clearly got a lot of magic the gathering inspiration. Let's keep going. Small Nebula. Okay, so this is a resource card, and these are the resources it produces. So this thing requires two supply and one energy. Small Nebula produces two energy, so it's not going to be enough to get this thing going on its own. Um, let's see. RE2 Transporter. This is an item. Allows any number of crew cards and the location to be transported to another. Um, I'm not sure about how location... I assume this is for the terrain, but um, I'm not entirely sure how locations work in this game. The rule book was a bit glib um and this one has no flavor text on it at all oh this stuck together <laughs> oh yeah yeah look at that oh. <laughs> are you serious with this design <laughs> captain we're picking up something strange on radar status report mr spock captain it seems to be a large garden shovel <laughs> oh what is that like a microscope slide underneath it yeah this is, this is a fantastic example of the kind of stuff you should get ready for in this game. This is completely illegible text because of the background. This is a case where they needed a clear bounding box. Oh man, this is a mess. And it's a shovel! It, it's literally, it, it's literally something I would use to clean my flower garden. <laughs> oh wow. RC1 Crewman. Crewman, when played in reaction, may substitute himself for another crew card, which has been affected by an opponent's card play the crewman is affected instead oh it's a red shirt <laughs> they literally put in the red shirt card although he's not really wearing a red shirt i guess he has a red background but yeah it's literally a card who acts as a, as a red shirt <laughs> uh is his name reed short and he's only he, he just started and he's only two weeks away from retirement poor guy <laughs> okay so here we go here's one with three supply and two energy so this is uh, this is a big one although you notice there isn't really a, um, the illustration shows the view from one of Drashir's lifeless ice moons. Um, so you notice something here. There are no restrictions on how you play these cards. There's no like, oh, I can only play, uh, let me see. Uh, by the way, looking in the, by the way, looking in the rule book for the rule on how these things get played. Um, you know how long it takes for me to see the win condition of this game? Page 14. Page 14 out of... 45, so a third of the way through. Better than Beast Clans, but not by much. Especially since they have all the all the major empires and stuff again. Let's see. Yeah, there's no limit to what level of card I can play. Like, you saw how the small nebula only provides two energy and no supply, but this one provides uh, three supply and two energy. I could play both of these cards on my first turn. This is uh, this is another, another problem that the game makes. This is like a, a problem not just with card games, but with games in general. And that is to put out literal cards that are literally just straight up better than other cards. That's, you know, not really a good thing to do. We're going to see some more examples of this going forward. But to have, you know, <clears throat> cards like uh, cards like this, where, where it's literally the same thing. And I'm not seeing any, like, restrictions on how many copies of cards you're allowed in a deck. Even if it was three, though, I'd want to load up on, like, these... T5s to easily pay for everything because not only do they produce more resources, but they take more damage to be be destroyed. They are literally just straight up better cards. Space Vertigo. Oh, the worst kind of Vertigo. Oh yeah, here's an example of a card with mixed text. So we have the flavor text on top, which you should never do. Um, although it, ex it explains the lore of the universe, uh, which is neat, but make sure it's distinct from your card text. There will be some no-nonsense people who don't want to read through all this. So that's why we have this on the bottom here. Um, oh, another one's stuck together. There we go. Corporate Escort. 
Ah, I'm gonna keep this card aside. So this is another one that has variable plasma. You pay energy to change its damage. Lucky crew action. Allows the crew card on which it is played to ignore anyone card played against that crew card discard after use. Oh, hey, red shirt, you might just live yet. Um, let's see. <sighs> Commercial outpost. Here's another one. This one has this one has shields. Oh, this one actually costs money to play. Oh, but here we go. Here it gives you stuff out here. Oh, you uh. Adds one supply and one economy to the terrain card in which it is played. Okay, so this is a this is a base. You play this you play this on a terrain card to give it more abilities and shields. So, yow. Uh, another Meshad frigate. Here we are. So uh, that's uh, pretty similar. There's some consistency here. It's a lot smaller. It has a much lower much lower uh, much lower maintenance cost. Although you'd have to pay for its shields. I guess the advantage is. Uh, you have to pay for its shields every turn, but you can always pay for all of its shields, and it will, it can get back all of its shields in one go rather than just one. Ionized Particle Field. Ah, this is one that uh, provides four energy. Okay, some asteroid fields are ionized with solar improv provides four energy on its first allocation phase, three on the second, two on the third, and one on the fourth discard after four turns. So here's another problem with this game. The elements are not self-tracking. A good game will have elements that track themselves without the players really need to know. Like, I was talking about the health of these ships before. Um, you actually have to track that. It's not like Magic the Gathering, where buff effects and damage effects go away at the end of turn. There's a reason that Magic has so many things that go away at the end of the turn. And so you only have to keep those in your mind for that long. So by having effects like this, you need something that can track it. If this was written like a magic card, it would say comes with four ion comes into play with four ion counters. At the start of your turn, add a number of energy equal to the number of ion counters on this card, then remove one ion counter. When this card has zero ion counters, discard it. That's how it would be written like a Magic the Gathering card because of that need for additional tracking. Uh, that was actually a complaint I found in some other reviews of this game is all of the additional tracking you have to do. Nuclear mine. A nuclear mine is a relatively small mine. Oh, is it? I have a feeling that some people would disagree with that assumption. Um, although you have to be scared. If a nuclear mine is relatively small, I mean, you, you've seen, you've seen Gundam 0083, right? You've seen, you've seen what a nuclear mine can do if you've, if you've seen that series. Causes two points of damage to any one ship, discard after use. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> it's another shovel. Oh, boarding party. Oh, here we go. Like, like a, like an action movie. Illustration, a corporate raiding party. Oh. I get the feeling that this is something that came off of a test card and probably should have been removed. Yeah. I've also seen some games that where, where their cards like look like like test cards, like play test cards. Like this is clearly this is clearly like a note left over from from the uh, from 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 development. Small planet, another resource. This one is uh Apparently it's Shaben 7. It actually provides an ammunition. Look at that, okay. Lucky targeting, all weapons, ah, oh, yeah. Ugh, geez, can you even read that, you guys? I'm not gonna read it for you. I'm gonna give you a chance to try to read it for yourself over this, this god-awful background. Corporate light cruiser. Is this the one I was looking for? Uh... Not quite. There was an example I was looking for. This is another one with a really low maintenance cost for seeing as it's strength four with a bunch of shields. Yeah, that's that's something. Although I guess the idea is is it takes the energy to fire its weapons. Injury. Okay, an injury partly card disables one crew card until a number of research points equal to the strength of the injury card are applied. So here's another funny thing. So there are, it, so there's no cost to paying that card. There are also stronger versions of injury. It's the same card. You have Q2 injury, we have Q6 injury. It's literally the same, but this one just takes a whole lot more to remove. It's literally just a card that's better. That's what happens when you don't have costs properly balanced throughout your game. E1 probe generates a number of research points equal to the strength. Oh wow, that's a good one. Okay, uh, that's the Mashad Light Cruiser. T2 Comet. Ah, oh, adds research points. Comets provide a number of research points until of their strength each turn. Comets last a number of turn equal to their strength and are then discarded. This is another example of a card that really needs some kind of tracking. E2 phaser refit. Fleet. Oh, 
that's another one that's a real pain to read. <laughs> Hey, look at me! It's me, Zoidberg! I'm a helmsman now! Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> it's just a crab. Oh my gosh, who's driving? Crab's driving! How can that be? <laughs> Large asteroid, another another terrain. Breakdown. Oh, one breakdown. Maybe played on a base. So this is basically injury, but for ships. Corporate destroyer. Let's see, is it in here? Engine synchronization allows the ship on which it is played to operate for one less energy per turn. That's neat. How does that work on, a, on, on one of the corporate ships? H3 Pulsar. Pulsar is coming to number of, cause a number of points of damage each turn as indicated above. A Pulsar lasts a number of turns equal to its strength. Ah, oh, I see. So this creates a hazard. That's a hazard card. H. Mishad Escort. Okay, let me see if... I, I, th I should have the... Meshad cruiser, Meshad like, oh, where is it? All right, okay, here we have the Meshad frigate versus the Meshad ex escort. So, these are cards, they have the same strength, they have the same cost of entry and maintenance, they have the same weapons, but for some reason the Meshad escort gets double nodes and a special ability that allows it to intercept damage intended for another ship. It's another case of literally the same card, but one is just better for some reason. Another terrain, fuser mechanism that's really hard to read. Offensive electronic warfare. Oh, this electronic warfare is so offensive. That, it's another scorpion, it's a big man. Security officer, prevents crew cards equal to or lesser strength from attacking anything at his location. I believe they're also, I think I have it. Yeah, that's just not this guy, the Marine. The Marine is a guy who goes onto a ship and causes havoc, and I guess the security officer is supposed to prevent that. Um. Another another one, Plasma Field. This one actually does damage. Oh, you can play it as a terrain or as a hazard. Okay, that's cool. Small Phaser Eel, Corporate Frigate. This is, I think we have another one like that. Love Interest, that's another obstacle. Preoccupies one crew card of equal or lesser strength for one turn, negating all functions. Look at that, very dramatic. Defensive Satellites, another, another uh, base option. Oh wow, it has phasers, lots of phasers. Phasers actually don't cost any energy. Uh, basically, they get this much ammunition. This is how much damage they can do in a turn. Phasers cost nothing to use, but the other attacks require ammunition. So something with a lot of phasers is really strong. Shuttlecraft, armory, moon, distribution node. Ah, this is a node, gives them another node. Ships are limited to a maximum of three extra nodes from refills. Exclusive Mishad technology. So they have, they have, uh, they have upgrade cards. You saw the yellow ones work on any ship. The green, the, these only work on the Mishad ships. Uh, they have ones that only work on specific regions. That's not bad. That's not a bad idea. If you're trying to go for cards that only work with specific classes of cards, giving them the same uh, card pattern isn't a bad idea. We have a mercenary, very bright orange. It looks like an orange rind too. What is this? What is this even printed on? Uh, dust Cloud causes one point of damage to a ship or base, discard after use. And Shield Fiend. Oh, this is something else. A she oh, this is a monster. Okay, a Shield Fiend instantly damages all the shields on a ship, which it is played and is then discarded. Ah, oh, may not be played on a ship with an Invincible Guardian. So, <clears throat> we have like Space Monster. We have some interesting stuff. We have shovels. <laughs> we have many shovels. Um, we have shovels, we have ships. Uh, you saw that it was actually a mixture of cards, and that's because this is supposed to be split in half into two decks to play. Um, how are you supposed to divvy those decks up? They don't say. They don't include like card lists for recommended decks or anything. That's one thing that two-player starters now always do, is make sure that they have a list for um, cards to be split up to be put on the proper thing. Okay, more examples, yay. Uh, we have the Krebis. Now, Krebis are a bit different. They actually equip these capsules onto their ships and the capsules are what provide them their shields. But here's another case. These two are exactly the same card. They have uh, they have the same cost. They attach to the same kind of ship, but the Minesweeper capsule just has more shields and more abilities. So it's clear that they're doing a lot of just straight up selling power in this case. I mean, I guess we're gonna see um, how much power it's selling when we go into the booster box. But um, yeah, it, it is neat that they gave us uh, gave us a nice, you know, half booster to go with it. Early warning beacon and an early warning buoy triggers the invasion alert. I allow five cards to be played on the turn it is played. Normally you're allowed to play three. This one I guess allows you to play four because it includes this one itself. Vectrian light cruisers, corporate scout cruiser. 
Ah, this is another one that produces a, uh... oh wow, this is a good one. Um, it costs two supply and an energy to maintain, but it produces a research point and it has four phasers. So yeah, this thing can, this thing can dish out some punishment. That's really good. Um, well, for this game, another, another capsule. Uh, did I get a Krebis, a regular Krebis ship in here? I guess not. There aren't a lot of different ones. Um, generates one research point per turn or allows the owning player uh, to look at one randomly selected card from the opponent's hand. That's really good. Um, space debris. Lesser Automaton. A. Uh, an exact robot replica of a crew card with the crew's life force placed into it. Gives the crew card in which it is played the following benefits. Immunity to health affecting cards. Its strength is added to the crew card's strength. Does that mean it cannot receive injury? That would be interesting. Space debris. May be used as one point of supply and one point of research on the turn played. This card is played in the allocation phase. Discard after use. Ah, it's an obstacle. I see. And another space station. So, yeah, that's a look at the... <laughs> at the shovels. Shovels! The shovel card. Ah, oh, let's, let's look up some highlights from, uh, from deck A, shall we? Okay, here's what a cruiser looks like. This is, it's got like this big slot here into which the capsules go. It's a bit, it's a bit clunky to have, uh, essentially have your ships come in two parts, because if you notice, it doesn't have any shields at all up here. Hey, look! It's the shovel, but it's just backwards with more diddly bobs. <laughs> I, I, I can see it right now. The guy who made this was like, oh man, I need to make like five ship designs by 2.30, and then he takes a look over in his kid's toy drawer, and he sees a little plastic red shovel, and he gets an idea. <laughs> Speaking of unreadable cards. <laughs> hey, it's me, Zoidberg. I'm a doctor again. Oh no, malpractice. <laughs> so, yeah. They also have this little ad card for, I guess there's supposed to be puzzle cards in here. I don't know if it's like the idea is that the cards form, uh, like like the actual creature cards form into this puzzle piece, or if the they just have like random puzzle cards shoved in here in place of an actual useful card, but I'm not sure. <laughs> But yeah, that's a look at, uh, that's a quick look at Galactic Empires. Like I said, it makes a lot of mistakes, particularly with how it makes its cards virtually illegible with, uh, with all of its design. I mean, I, I'm looking at the screen, maybe this is a little easier to read when I'm looking at it through the camera, but man, if this is not a, not a color blindness test, I'm not sure what is. So, uh, let's, uh, next time take a look at the booster box. It is a 36 pack booster box for the set powers of the mind this is uh, set four and you can see them they're here they're <laughs> i'm smarter than you no i'm smarter than you i'm the smarter one no i'm smarter guys when they said that to fight you must outsmart your opponent this is not what they meant so i can't guarantee it'll be as interesting and lightning or just downright entertaining as the beast clans one but considering that this is 36 15 card packs for a set with 152 cards, I imagine we're gonna have a lot of duplicates. So, until next time, this is Kodak signing off.